Hey everyone, Irit here, and I'm pretty excited about today's videos. So just a quick run through. There are three videos today. This is the first one, and I'm showing you what I created with the Jane Davenport Spellbinders Making Faces collection. So in the two first videos, I'm going to show you how I colored these um pages, this artwork from Jane, beautiful, beautiful images. And then the third video shows you how I put everything together and incorporated these pieces into my art journal. So I hope you will join me and that you will enjoy these. Make sure you check out also my unboxing video and swatching video so you can see exactly the products that I got and that I'm playing with. So let's get started. I actually, the first uh, piece that I created is the girl that you see on the back there, the back of the packaging of these um, sheets of paper. So you can see them, right? You can see that girl on the left side next to those three um, crayons. And I really, it was my first project using this surface. It's called Not Quite a Blank Slate Set, and you get um, what Jane says, 10 specialty mixed media surfaces. So five have already artwork on them, and then five are black, uh, blank, <laughs> sorry. So um, the first one I just wanted to, I thought it would be really easy to follow Jane's example and play with the supplies without having to think about, you know, colors and all that stuff. So that's what I did first, just to get uh, myself familiarized with it. And then I moved on to this second piece of uh, page, blank, not so, not quite a blank slate uh, paper, and I'm starting to color it. So I found with all of these, uh, with all of these uh, surfaces, these mixed media papers, that for me, it worked really well to start with a layer of paint. So I use, I think on everyone, the Matchmaker set, which has these three kind of skin tones uh, paints. And I think at some point I might have added also gesso, but for the most part, I kept just to these uh, paints. Obviously, you can mix them with Jane's other paints. And I actually mixed them with the other um, paints that I got here. So for example, all these pink and purple shades I created using the color sticks and mixing them with the paint. And of course, that beautiful, beautiful brush is from the Mermalicious brush set and it works really well and it's a lovely brush and also very um, pretty to look at and play with. So I decided with this girl to keep it kind of monochromatic. I really wanted just to play with these beautiful shades of pink and peach and some purples and um, yeah I, I I love her hair and her expression and I thought she looked kind of delicate and also the size is a little bit smaller than the other girls in this pack. It comes with two images that are uh, a little bit smaller and then two images that are more close up on the faces and those are the ones that I went into more detail when it comes to the shading and here I kept it a little bit simpler and there is uh, also one frame. Uh, you will see everything. So the trick with getting a good result in my opinion is layering and sometimes with paint it means you have to kind of wait between applications because otherwise if everything is still wet and you keep adding shades and you keep adding colors it can get uh, muddy so I really recommend first of all I like working in thin layers anyway but obviously if you work in thin layers it will also dry faster so I recommend doing that now the good thing about all the um, the color sticks and also the drama sticks, you can work them into wet paint. 
but just be mindful then that um, the colors do get to kind of move around a little bit more and you have less control. So they blend beautifully also on dry paint. So for the most part, if you want kind of more control and you want kind of a deeper shading, then it's probably better to wait a little bit until your paint is dry. And you can see I'm using the purple colors for shading. They work beautifully for that. And I learned that from Jane. So I'm kind of letting that rest and I'll come back to it later if I feel the need and I will be adding a few more details. And then I am moving on to this lady. And again, I'm starting with a base layer of the, um, just the skin colored acrylic paint. And because it's a more close up image here, I get to add more shading and it's kind of easier to add more shading when you just, you know, when you have a larger space to work with. So here I am, you know, I'm just having fun with these supplies and you can see that the color sticks, uh, first of all, you can see how intense the color is and I absolutely love it. But you can see that if you are working just on the surface as it is without any gesso or matte medium or a previous layer of paint, it is a bit harder to blend these. So it all depends what you want. If you want kind of a more um, textured look where you can actually see your, you know, the marks where the lines of applying the, the stick there, the crayon, then do that directly on the surface. But if you want the ability to kind of blend it more smoothly, then I recommend starting with um, some sort of paint or gesso, um, that sort of thing, just to give you that uh, surface that allows the paint to move. So I thought I would uh, try a, f a little bit of watercolors and this paper accepts it, no problem. Um, I again recommend adding some sort of base. You don't want to get it kind of soaking. It's not watercolor paper, so you have to know how to work with it. And you can absolutely use, I use the mermaid markers, I use watercolors, also the, the color sticks. These are all water soluble products, but it just works better on a surface of paint. So just giving you my tips, the things that I discovered while playing. I grabbed this, uh, piece of paper with that frame and I was just playing around with the sponge. It really allows for a very quick application of paint because of the large uh, surface area and it blends beautifully. So I moist my blenders. This is what I do also when I apply makeup to my face <laughs> and um, that kind of gives you a little bit more moisture and it also uh, prevents from the product just, you know, sinking into your sponge or blender. So I, I wet them first and then I squeeze out all the water and uh, use them damp. But the thing is, uh, I think this is great for kind of larger areas, but for um, more accurate application, I prefer using the batons and you will see me adding them a lot. So here I'm mostly focused on the paints and the um, uh, color sticks. I think I was a little bit um, worried <laughs> or <laughs> just kind of unsure about the pastels because it's not a product that I'm used to using, but I'm going to be brave soon and it turned out to be one of my favorite, favorite products to play with. And I'm definitely going to pick up more sets because I think it's a fantastic product and it really allows for easy blending and kind of building up shadows and depth of color. But we will get to that. So here I was just playing with uh, some mermaid markers. Again, you can mix all these things. You can mix mermaid markers with the color sticks, mix things with paint. Uh, anytime you mix kind of watercolors or something like mermaid markers, if you mix them with acrylic paint, that makes them permanent. And then again, you can layer things, let them dry and they won't budge. So here I'm starting to add color and you can see how beautifully it blends 
on top of the paint. So once you have that uh, surface of acrylic paint, you can easily, easily blend. And I'm just building the, the colors here, adding shadows where, you know, shadows would naturally appear. So below, beneath the jawline and around the eyes, like under your eyebrows, eyebrows, there would be a shadow. And then the lighter areas are, of course, the bridge of the nose and your forehead and the higher, like your cheekbones, the highest part of them. Those are lighter and then other areas are darker and going around the lips and adding a little bit under the nose. This is, it needs time and layering and going back and assessing and looking if you want to get that dimensional look there's really i don't think there's a way around it unless you're very very brave with your color applications but a lot of times you know you add something it looks good and then when you kind of let it dry and come back to it you find that it looks flatter than you thought and then you have to go back and add more depth and there are areas that are always darker also in the shadows there's no one shade of shadow there are areas that are um, very dark and then there are areas that are a little bit dark so just you know follow those lines and gradually add more and more color more and more detail and you will see if you keep at it and don't give up fast, um, you will see that your creations will be more interesting and have more depth. This is something I'm saying this not as, you know, this is how I do this all the time and that's the right way to do it. This is what works for me and these are also the struggles that I have. You know, many times where I paint uh, my own faces, I will find the result kind of flat and boring but it is about adding that detail adding that depth going into it again and again so here i am starting with the pastels and this is pretty much the first time that i used them the more i used them the more i loved them they're amazing this is such a great product and my favorite way of using those was with these uh, batons these little blending tools they give you a lot of control they're very easy to clean between applications so you don't need to have like 10 of them um, you can definitely just wipe off 95% of the color just wipe it off on your surface and you can pick up a new color without a problem so they are just so much fun. The color is intense, but you can very easily blend it. And I really, really enjoyed using these and uh, I will keep on using them. They work beautifully on, yeah, on the paint surface. So I love the ability of mixing different mediums and also finding those combinations that work. You know, I have some go-to combinations like, um, I don't know, watercolor and ink is a favorite combination. And now uh, this for me is like that base of paint and then coming in with the pastels for adding that detail, that depth, those shadows. It just makes everything look better, more dimensional, more, you know, th like dimensional is what I want to say, because we are working with a flat piece of paper. So we need to make it to make the images pop, to bring them to life. And it's just the shadows. That's what does it for me. All that detail, all those um you know, different colors. So I'm just playing here. I just want to see how the colors perform, how they layer. I'm adding just a little bit of warmth around the girl. Everything is very kind of pink and purpley. And I thought adding just a little bit of um, orange kind of 
looks a bit like there's a light behind her. I thought it would also help her pop. Uh, I will end up fussy cutting her out of this piece of paper and just uh, adding her to my journal. But if you're not going to do this, if you are keeping this as a whole piece, then I think it's a nice touch to have. So you can see how I'm adding that depth and it is really, really easy with these. I have to say it's, I was, you know, surprised myself. I don't have a lot of experience using this type of um, product. So I can definitely say it is user friendly, easy to use also for beginners and just a joy to work with and play with. Um, I, absolutely loved them. I think the pastels and the quilt, uh, the quilt, the quilt, the quilt pen are my top two favorite products for, from the goodies that I got to play with. Uh, and the pastels, I would say, along with these uh, baton blenders, those are my favorites. I'm going to pick up all the colors and some backups for the pens because I feel they are very unique and I don't have anything like that in my collection. And yeah, it's just, you know, if you're familiar with the pen pastels, they are um, a very similar product from my understanding. I don't have any pen pastels, but those are huge and expensive. And here you get 18 colors in this one palette and I used them a lot and I didn't see a lot of um, like a, a big dent in my palette. So I am assuming these will last for a really, really long time. Such a great value for money and just a beautiful product. I, I don't have anything bad to say about it. I think the only thing to keep in mind and I will ask Jane if I can remember my name when I meet her. <laughs> or I'll be fangirling the whole time. Um, I'm guessing you need some sort of fixative for these, but uh, you can easily find these uh, like a fixative in any art store and just give it a little spray if you want to make sure that everything stays put. So you can see me just building the color, adding um, color to her cheeks. I do love very, very pink cheeks. <laughs> you can see that in all of the girls that I um, colored here and adding some of the um, darker purple shades to those shaded areas and just trying to build that dimension. And if I see that the shadows are not dark enough, then I go back in and I add some more and I blend it out to get those smooth color transitions, those, um, you know, nice blends. It's super, super easy with this. Um, also, there are no brushes <laughs> to wash, which I really appreciate. So end of part one, this is what I made till now. And I will see you in part two, where I continue to play with these pretty goodies. See you there.